Did you know there are over 300 companies selling e-bikes in the US? We are spoiled for choice and it can be overwhelming. Since 2021, I've explored hundreds of e-bikes and produced detailed reviews on more than I can count. I've learned how e-bikes are manufactured at factories, sat down for extended interviews with CEOs and policymakers, learned about retail and service with many e-bikes, and ridden e-bikes all over the USA with hundreds of viewers on our Go Electric group rides. My personal insight combined with everything I've learned from viewers in person and in the comments section have helped me to develop a strong sense for what constitutes a competitive e-bike. In fact, several of the leading manufacturers told me they've made improvements to their e-bikes and helmets based on my critiques. Now I'm putting the experience to work, making sense of it all for you with this Go Electric e-bike buying guide. I'll show you how to identify the best e-bike for your needs and budget. We'll talk about the major players as well as brands and styles you may not have discovered on your own. Welcome to the Go Electric e-bike buying guide series. Hey everyone, Miss Go Electric here. If you're looking for an e-bike where you can ride it in good weather and on pavement, then all the e-bikes that I've talked about so far in this series are worth considering. But if you're looking to ride off-road and in maybe off season weather like it is today below freezing, then you're gonna want maximum capability. Today, I have three bikes in front of me that are just that. They have a full suspension and a torque sensor. So let's get started. When most people think of maximum capability e-bikes, they tend to think of mountain bikes first. This here is the Luna Cycles X2. This is a carbon fiber frame and a torque sensing mid-drive motor, which puts more torque to the wheels than a rear hub motor. And all of the components that you see here are mountain bike grade, so they're more premium than any other e-bike I've reviewed. If you go to a local bike shop and are looking at an e-mountain bike with similar components as this, then you're probably gonna find brands like Trek or Specialized in the price range of about eight to $10,000. Luna Cycles does it a little bit differently because they sell direct to consumer, so they cut out the middleman and can price this bike at about $4,000, and it has all those similar components that I just talked about. But this has at least three times more power than any of the electric mountain bikes that I've seen in any bike shop. If you are buying a mountain bike because you're gonna actually be riding on mountains that look like this, then you're gonna wanna buy an e-mountain bike that has a dropper seat post like this one here. When you're going downhill, you want to have the seat down so that you can position your weight over the rear wheels and that way you don't fly over the handlebars. And when you go uphill, you wanna have the seat up like this so that you don't pull that front wheel up and behind you and flip backwards. But if you're not riding on mountains, that doesn't matter to you. This also has a carbon fiber frame, which makes it more lightweight. This is under 60 pounds, even with the big 820 watt hour battery in it. Shaving the extra weight is useful for someone who is riding competitively, but that's at a sacrifice of durability because the carbon fiber frames, if you crash them, then you could crack them and then you have to replace the whole frame, which is very expensive. The Luna X2 is an excellent e-mountain bike that is purpose built, but for most people, they want something that has a lot of versatility and includes things like a kickstand, fenders, rear rack, and lights so that they can take it pretty much anywhere. So let's move on to the next bike. This here is the Mach Wheel Obsidian and it is a maximum capability, all purpose e-bike. Now, this does not do mountain biking as well as the Luna X2, but there are a lot of features and a lot of things that this bike can do that the Luna can't. The Obsidian is about $2,000 less than the Luna X2. And why is that? Well, for one, this has an aluminum frame versus a carbon fiber frame. And this is about a 20 pound heavier bike than what we saw in the Luna. This also has a rear hub motor instead of a mid drive motor, which means it's less efficient and you don't have as much torque on the ground as you would with a mid drive. And all the components like the brakes, the shifter and the suspension are name brand, but they are lower end than the Luna. But there are some advantages of this bike over the Luna, starting with the battery. This is a bigger 19.6 amp hour battery and it is UL certified. So if safety is important to you, you might want that peace of mind. 
Next is the tires. These are 26 inch diameter by four inch wide fat tires. You can take this on any kind of terrain, whether that's sand, snow, mud, and you can also decide if you want to pump up the tires for better efficiency or deflate them for better traction. No matter what, fat tires offer a smoother ride because they act as another form of suspension but they do come at a cost. They're not as agile or maneuverable and they're heavier. From a usability standpoint, the Obsidian offers quite a bit. One starting with comfortability with this wider saddle. So you have a lot more endurance. You can ride for a longer period of time and be comfortable. Not only that, but this also has things like fenders included, integrated lights, and it has a kickstand. On top of the standard features that you see here, Mockwheel sells a ton of accessories to make the bike more versatile, including things like a front rack, a trailer, and a ton more. One of the things I like about Mockwheel as a brand is that they have a very wide service network and most direct-to-consumer brands do not offer that. They also have a two-year warranty with this bike. All right, now I have one more bike to cover at a more affordable price point. This is the fifth wheel Torrent 2FT. It has similar specifications as the Obsidian. This company is much smaller, not as big as Mach Wheel, and actually I've never even heard of this brand before, but the price is hard to ignore. This is $1,000 less than the Obsidian. I've seen it on sale as low as $1,400. So what do you sacrifice for that $1,000 saving? Well, first off is that this has a lot of name brand entry level components in comparison to the Obsidian, which had mid range components. Now, for example, that includes the Shimano seven speed tourney derailleur, which the Obsidian had an eight speed Altus. And it also has a Sysindex different shifter up here on the handlebars. The hydraulic front suspension has 30 millimeters less travel than the Obsidian as well. This does have hydraulic brakes, but these are made by Logan versus Chectro like we saw on the Obsidian. These are lower entry as well. Now I said Mach Wheel has a wide variety of accessories available and a big service network and fifth wheel has none of that, but there are some advantages. The Torrent 2 FT has all the standard options that the Obsidian has, like the integrated light and the fenders, but this also has a rear rack. And a rear rack really unlocks more capability here because not only can I take a bunch of stuff with me, I can add panniers and things like that. I didn't even see a rear rack as an option on the Obsidian, but they do have a trailer, so that could do the job of taking anything else with you. As far as the frame geometry goes, this is a step through design. So there isn't a secondary down to like we saw in the Obsidian, which would make it a little bit easier to get on and off, but you still have that rear shock that is going to obstruct it a little bit. Plus the handlebars here are a little bit more of an upright sweeping back position. Now I mentioned serviceability and although they don't have a dealer network for service, they do have brand name components. So we have a Bafang motor here, Shimano components, the Logan hydraulic brakes. So these are our things that every bike shop should be able to replace. Overall, this is a great value for a big 20 amp hour UL certified battery and the same power capability of up to a thousand watts of power. Well, I hope this video was helpful in determining which maximum capability full suspension e-bike is right for you in the $4,000 category range all the way down to $1,500 so that you can see what you get for that price point or what you sacrifice for the lower end. If you're interested in learning more about each one of these e-bikes, please see the links in the description below. And you can also find discount codes at deals.miscoelectric.com. Please consider subscribing to the Misco Electric Ride Reviews channel for full length e-bike reviews and e-mobility coverage. Well, thank you so much for watching this latest video and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.